Welcome to TFP, the Theater Folk Podcast, the place to be for drama teachers, drama students, and theater educators everywhere. I'm Lindsay Price, resident playwright for Theater Folk. Hello. I hope you're well. Thanks for listening. This is episode 167. You can find any links to this episode in the show notes, which are at theaterfolk.com forward slash episode 167. Okay, so today we are talking process, production process, the process of putting on a play, and more specifically, solving the problems that often come up during that process. How many times have you looked at a play, you read it, you loved it, and the first thing that comes to your mind is, oh, we can't do this play, right? Okay, so we're going to talk to two teachers and uh, co-directors, Dee Sutter and uh, Tracy Duffin, and they put on my play, The Gift, last year. And based on some really awesome pictures I saw from the production, knew I wanted to have them on the podcast. They came up with so many unique solutions. And instead of saying, we can't do this play, these co-directors went to the mat. This is a great, great discussion on problem solving, creative problem solving, and directing. So let's get to it. All right. I am speaking with Dee Sutter. Hello, Dee. Hello. And Tracy Duffin. Hello, Tracy. Hello. All right. Uh, so both of the these uh, both of these folks are directors. Uh, what school are you directing? Are you at? We are at Custer County District High School in Miles City, Montana. Awesome. Teachers and directors. And they co-directed a play of mine called The Gift. And they sent such amazing uh, pictures and just talked about, to me, the some of the different choices that they made that I thought this would be a really good conversation about, you know, what, what is this process that they went through? And I know that so many of you go through. So, uh, so guys, let's start from the uh, very beginning. What are you thinking about? What are you looking at when it comes to choosing a play for your school and for your students? Well, I, I suppose like most high school theater programs, we are always long on girls short on men. Um, we run our program as an extracurricular. We have a theater class, but we also have do the play as an extracurricular. So we run it as a, we take all comers. So we announce an audition. And then from the amount of people, the numbers that we get auditioning, we try to pick a play that we can handle. Oh, so you guys audition first and then figure out your pool and then pick a play. Yes. Oh, okay. It requires a lot of footwork in advance because you have to have read quite a few and have, um, you know, quite a catalog of things that of, of plays that you can go to. Do you have like a, do you like come to the, to your season with like a short list or? Usually. Yes. And we try to mix it up again uh, with comedy and drama and then something someone's heard of. So if they wanted to go off, and do something with acting, they can say, I played um, mm. a certain character. I was in Taming of the Shrew. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And uh, I, so that's really, I really like, I really like, because that, that really, you know, that really says to me that you are, you're student centered. Like you're, it's really about showcasing your students. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Do you guys always co direct, or is this something that just happened this time, or? We've actually done 20 plays together. Oh my God. Awesome. Oh, okay. So uh, we have, we have quite a collection of posters upstairs of all of the plays that we've done, but uh, I'm retiring this year. So Dee's a little um, confused as to what's going to happen <laughs> next year. <laughs> Dismayed. <clears throat> it's all going on your shoulders, Dee, and you're going to be the one. Yeah. Something like that. Okay. So once you've got, you have your, your students audition, um, and you've, you've chosen the play based on your talent pool. Um, what's the next step for you guys? Then, then obviously we, we, we put our actors in our slots. Now your play was, um, quite a bit larger than we could handle, but I loved it. 
so much. Um, I love a good dramedy and I just love the, I love the, um, the O Henry aspect to it as something classic that the kids would be able to hang on to. And so I, I took the script home Mm. in my bag and kept looking at it and looking at it until I could shoehorn it into the cast that we had. So that's why we made some of the very weird, odd choices Mm. that we did with this play. Cause I, I, called Tracy over the weekend. Mm-hmm. I said, I think I've got it figured out. <laughs> we can do this play. Well, some of them, and like, uh, cause you have, actually you made some really um, ingenious choices, I would say. So this play is sort of a very abstract, there's a, there, there's mentions of Gift of the Magi, and there's also mentions of what is what does it mean to be a selfish person and what does it mean to be a selfless person? There's uh so just in terms of um, having all of these characters in this in this play, there's two characters who are um, depending on how you cast them, their brother sister or their two you know or their brother brother or sister sister, however it works. Um, but you guys uh, took 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 the two characters and made one of them talk to a puppet. So one of them was real and one of them was a puppet. The puppet voice. He voiced the puppet differently. (laughs) Honestly, we were amazed at how well it worked um, with making that choice because the other one, one of the halves of that character was very sarcastic and, and um, kind of naughty. And so that one became the, the monkey. The monkey puppet. It worked because it, we, we kind of played it so that the Taylor character was a nice guy, but he wanted to say mean stuff. So he made the puppet say all the mean stuff. Awesome. I think that is a great, it's a great way of, you know, cause I get, I get calls all the time. It's like, look, we have to, can we cut these characters? Can we do this? Can we, and, and sort of like, well, you know, it, it's what's, what's the intention of the, of the script here and how can we maintain that? And I think that this is an example of, um, okay, we can't have these two characters. We can only have one. How do we maintain the? Uh, how do we maintain the uh, intention of the characters and the intention of the script with only one person? And I think that's a really that's a great choice. What are well, some? Oh, go ahead. Fed into the whole idea. Um, you have the popular crowd and you have the unpopular crowd, and what <coughs> makes what makes you more unlikable in high school than having a psychotic break right there? <laughs> Some of those other characters were such nice, genuine characters. They still talk to him. They still put up with him. And then some of the other um, sarcastic comments, you know, and some of his lines were wonderful. The one that strikes me is the one, my goal is to not talk at all. (laughs) Well, obviously you're a puppet. You shouldn't be talking. (laughs) No. Well, you know, it's funny because they're really, I don't know. I've, I've just been in so many schools where, I'm not sure I've met a kid who talked to a puppet, but I've met lots <laughs> of kids who were of that, on that edge. Right. And I have seen people around them just treat them as human beings. Right. You know? Right. And uh, and also, you know, there's there's we have so many stories about people like that who are not treated like human beings. And so it, it's an, it's a very interesting, it's a, it's a lovely choice. And just a, a uh, you know, just showing some, creativity right off the bat where instead of saying well we can't do this play we can't do this play you know so well why not you know put your thinking caps on what other choices did you make um the other choice that we made you had originally written the script and we understand why because it was a colossal part (coughs) um you had your your lead character as two different um versions of herself right right and you know to, to find in a small school to find two girls that have enough bodily similarity um, to run that in the that middle are great actors. that are good actors <laughs> and then to run that in the middle of your um, as an abstract scene in the middle of the other scenes I we thought oh my goodness that's going to be really difficult so what we made the choice of running all the flashback scenes as film and we built a giant screen and it shows up in this weird white square in the back of the of the theater space and we had a projector hidden on on stage and my co-director was hidden <laughs> me hidden behind on stage. a set piece and she um would load up and project all these little scenes we had a a very competent um 
a filmographer here, cinematographer, and he um, edited and filmed all those pieces on location in several locations around town. And then we showed them as film clips throughout the play. Well, and I just like, it's what, again, it's a great, great choice. You know, when you've, when you're in a situation where it's just not going to be possible to, um, bring something to life again, how do you maintain the integrity of something and yet use the resources that you have at your disposal? And I think that the, the whole notion of, um, bringing in a different, um, a different form like that, like bringing in film, I think is perfect. I think it actually is, and I'm sure that it was, you know, your film, your your your, your even now I can't say it. Your 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 film guy loved it. Yeah, it was a great opportunity for him. He wanted to kind of get into more of that. He works out at the community college, and he wants to do a film class. And I think it was a good opportunity for him to get to know some kids and figure out how they work. Uh, it was great for our actors, too, to see the difference between stage acting and film acting. Oh, sure. Uh, the Kim Kimberty character was we had played by the same actress, and she did much better on stage than she did in film because she's almost too overt for film. She's used to being a stage actress, so she's just too big for film sometimes. Her facial expressions were too too much. And then we had a couple of actors that were way better at film and, and were very good at the subtleties. So I thought that was a, a nice experience for some of our veteran actors as well. Well, what an interesting experience for them to be able to, like in the moment, actually realize that there's a different, it's a different rhythm, right? To act on stage than to act on screen. Yes. And as you said, you know, we're pretty student centered. We had two actors that were not going to be available the weekend of our performance. Oh. So we cast them as actors that were only in the film scenes. They didn't ever appear on stage. So we were able to uh, accommodate that schedule for them and make it so uh, Bob and Laura were only uh, in film. Uh, unfortunately, they were, you know, so they didn't get to ever come and take the vow. <clears throat> but... Uh, but they were still with us. But they got to take part. I mean, and those are those are two very important characters. Like yes, in they were very, very good actors, both of them, and we would have been sorry to not include them. Well, it's a nice, well, what a nice way to be able to do it, you know? I think that uh, I think it works really well, and I think it's a great. You know, a lot of times I, I, I hear from um, from teach from, from I'm forgetting directors mostly that they have trouble. They want to do it exactly as it is, peers on the page, and they have trouble visualizing any other way. And I just think that that's another reason that I wanted to talk to you guys is because that you, you just, you know, in these two wonderful examples of, of just visualizing how you use the, what you've got at your disposal and, uh, and still being able to do the play. Um, I think that's great. Excellent. I'm glad you agree. <laughs> oh, yeah. We all agree. We're all, we're all in the same we're all in the same boat here. Okay, so talked about, so you, how is it for you as directors, if you're not picking the play until you're sort of in the, in, in motion, you know, what is your process like in terms of um, thinking about the play and the vision and the theme and all of those directorial things? Do you work on the fly? Do you not worry about it and sort of see what the students bring? What's your director's process as you move forward? Well, you know, I mean, obviously when we picked the play and we said, okay, we're going to do this, then you make all those decisions. I mean, I made that the decision to do the filming right in the beginning. We talked about it. I said, you know, there, I counted it up. I said, there's a quarter of this page, 25 pages are done as film. Can we pull that off? Um, and it's in small enough, it was in small enough pieces that the texture of it worked. The longer clips weren't until you were so invested in watching the play, it, wouldn't have become annoying as audience. So, I mean, I think that helped. So I went through your script and I had gotten the electronic copy. So I, and I, I just kind of highlighted, put a big stripe down. Okay. And, and then looked back and said, okay, where do these, where are these film clips going to happen? And is that going to work visually? And then <coughs> from there um, came up with the idea that, it, you know, to try to make the set as easy as possible, you know, first of all, you're, um, your teacher character was kind of flighty, kind of. We made her never ever met a drama teacher like her at all. Never ever. <laughs> we 
we thankfully we cast a, a young lady who is a, a who is a dancer. Oh, so cool! She was perfectly comfortable sitting there in extended child pose. <laughs> It was hysterical, and she was just so funny, and she was wearing yoga pants and flowy clothes and and was just very, very fun. Yeah. <laughs> it was a fun thing. Uh, it's funny that Dia's talking about, okay, well, all these creative decisions are getting made. Okay, Dee's an art teacher, and I'm a government teacher. So she's like, all these, you know, oh, we, we it's going to be fine. And then I go and make a spreadsheet of the – of the page numbers and which is film and then where it's going to be set. The Kim and Kimberly character needed 16 costume changes. Holy cow. I know. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was insane. Yeah. See, I would just, I would just like throw just, everybody in one costume and go, okay, you're wearing this for the whole thing. <laughs> we, just, we, just, we decided early on that we we wanted them to be in like the same color. So it was obvious that who was who. So we put him in, in um, pink. And so we were just surveying the entire cast of women. Okay. Who has pink stuff? <laughs> so we had enough, enough costumes for poor Kim, but it was, it was something else, but she's like all these creative things. And I'm trying to figure out how the heck yeah. are we going to do that? This is why we're a great team. She handles all the checklists. <laughs> I was she just about sure, to say. Yeah, she makes sure the poster is out and up when it, so that we can get some people in the seats and, you know, I think make that, sure the bills get paid. And, yeah, no, I think that's a perfect that's a perfect uh, teamwork um, when it comes to directing something, to have somebody who makes sure all the trains run on time and to have yeah. somebody who's like, I think the train should be sparkles and like, <laughs> and we should, have a, we should have a film projector on the train, you know, like... Yeah. <laughs> It just means that everything's getting taken care of. And part of it is, obviously, we've been doing this for a really long time. And part of this play was also a nod to everything we've ever done. Um, oh, that was we, had, we had play posters from a lot uh, of the plays that we've produced. We had set pieces that we had built for other plays that we brought <laughs> out and put on those shelves and wigs and costumes and I put every things. script on Miss G's desk. Oh, well, the, okay. So I'll, I'll just uh, we're gonna put I'm gonna put some pictures in the show notes. But the play takes place for majority of it in a drama classroom, and it's just it's just beautiful. Like I just love the it, there's a chaos to the. Uh, to the the, the the set I love how you've uh, hung you hung chairs you know from the ceiling it just it's a very um tactile and all in it, it, it's a vertical set yes <laughs> we that wanted it to look like the play closet but people can actually walk there <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah with lockers and the and I just think I think that that's a you know it, it's a very it's a very accessible set like in terms of um, it's, it's very creative, but it's, it's not complicated. Does that make sense? You know, right. that it's very I mean, vivid. I think that when I always have felt that when the curtain opens, the audience should have just like this visual treat, mm -hmm. you know, and they should know exactly where you are before mm -hmm. anyone says a word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's sort of, it is Miss G's mind a little bit. Right. Right. No, and I think that, but I think that that's, I think that's amazing too. I mean, I'm, I'm a real, I'm a real believer in, you know, if you really wanted to, you could throw two cubes on stage, and if you had to, you could take one cube away. You know, just in terms right. of, we work with a lot of schools and a lot of teachers who don't have stages and who are, you know, it's the cafeteria floor, and right. need that flexibility. But there is something to be said for a visual thesis, you know, and a, and a visual, absolutely. We, you know, our, we take things in visually. Theater is a visual medium. Right. Well, and also we put that stuff out early enough so that the kids could then feed off it as well. You know, some of the best moments were when kids went back and they picked up something that we hung on the wall and then used it. Yeah. They had in, a little, little sword fight. They put on some hats. You know, yeah. <clears throat> Things kids do when they've got toys to play with. No, totally. And it's sort of like, and then it becomes, they're, be, they're in, a, in an environment. They're not in a set. Now, I don't know if I sent you the picture of um, the characters in the Marge Simpson wig. 
I don't know if I... I uh, do not have that one. <laughs> it, say, it says that they're supposed to be like lovers from an ancient time the the two the characters that that were were boyfriend and girlfriend so we made right. them homer and marge simpson oh. <laughs> it's, the, it's the, the 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 pair that never got to present oh. their, right their thesis and i said okay whatever costume you're in you ha- you have that time break where they have obviously presented while the audience was au- watching the film piece and they're done but I said, you have to have something on so that the audience goes, what direction did they go with their <laughs> So they were Marge and Homer. Oh, we my had God. The back, so it worked out. Yeah. And she's talking about all the creative stuff. And I'm thinking, boy, it was so really helpful to not have to put anything away. The ladder was on stage. The duct tape was on stage. <laughs> you know, we were able to use all the stuff that you would have on your stage and you usually have to clean up. We just left it there. <laughs> Again, it's uh, it is it is. It's I've I've never been in a I've never I don't think I've ever been in a really neat drama classroom. It's sort of no. an explosion of everything. Definitely, Miss G is way neater than well than ours. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are your rehearsals like? Um, we usually go right after school for about an hour and a half. We go Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. So yeah, Wednesday night is church night. And so we practice um, four days a week. And then when we get right down to the end, we might throw in a Saturday to build set or a Saturday um, to practice. One of the other unusual things that we've worked out over the years, um, the week of the production, we usually like to do a free show, um, sometimes for a, um, a classroom. And then we also do our cast party before we actually have the production so that we get the, our bang for our buck with the bonding of the cast before we're done. Because we find that, you know, this is such a huge commitment on a, in a high school kid's life that when it's over, they want to run for the hills and get caught up on their geometry. Mm-hmm. So we clean up and clear the stage the night after the last play. And, um, and then they're off to whatever their next commitment is, be it tennis or track or whatever it is. Yeah, I haven't. I've never heard that, and I think what a fantastic idea! Like, get the get the bonding, get the excitement, get everyone worked up. Yep. You know, in terms of um, togetherness. Yeah, I, they don't really like each other, and it's fun to sit down and eat a meal. And we usually try to show a film or something like that. Um, that that kind of goes with the goes with the theme of the play. So this what did, year, what this did you year show? I showed an old 80s film called Some Kind of Wonderful. Yes, of course. Of course. <laughs> they loved it. I always try to find something that they've never seen. Did you tell them it's the same as Pretty in Pink, only uh, Better. different people? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so what was your... Okay, let's talk about challenges. What were some challenges for you uh, working on this play, aside from the 16 costume changes? Oh, <laughs> um, well, just scheduling scheduling all those film scenes because that was done outside of all those rehearsal hours was difficult because you know obviously we had a couple of kids that had um limited scheduling anyway that's why they were in that part um and then scheduling to film and um all those different takes and Mm -hmm. different places too we went our local community college has a nursing program and so they had a hospital a faux hospital room set up so that's where we did our filming (laughs) of laura in the hospital room that's awesome yeah, Went to a great. couple of different homes near the school um, to do some of those scenes that were done in the home and, uh, you know, threw flour all over the kitchen. In a- yeah, that was my daughter's house. That was really popular. <laughs> that was crazy. All, the, all you film people, they're always coming in and making a mess. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Uh, and um, what, do you, what, what, was, what do you feel was your biggest success? I think the final product was very seamless. You know, um, the, I asked somebody that watched the play, I said, what did you think of the video thing? And she said, well, I was put off at first, but then I couldn't wait to see what happened Mm -hmm. because one of the things that's difficult about your play is that the timeline is by no means continuous. You know, I'm good that way. You end with the scene of her getting ready to leave to make the apology to, to make the apology that you start with in you know the middle, the middle of act one <laughs> do you know what i mean so i think it oh, took yeah. people a little while to wrap their brains about around what was going on 
But, you know, I think that's true of any complex plot, that it, it takes people a while to pick it up. Yes. I think you hit it right on the head. If uh, someone in the audience was like, oh, I was didn't I didn't like it at first and then was drawn in that whole right. that that just having the little bits and then getting more and more into the story. I think that, and, uh, and that's why, you know, Miss Organized next to me was so important in this play, because not only did she have these checklists and we're going to film this here and we're going to film this there. And these are the 12 things that we need to take with us. We need to take the wig. We need to have the hat. We need to have the jacket, you know, whatever, the, you know, whatever it was, um, was also uh, a big piece in getting that to work on film was having those costumes in the right places because that scene where she is leaving for school, she has to be dressed in the same stuff as when she's at school making that apology. So we had to figure out on our little, or she did on her little thing, which day was which. So we could know what costume she was in so that as people watched, they would get that timeline correct. That makes sense. Yeah, no, no. You, it was just it's it's all it's a uh, it's a it's an ever moving tapestry. This thing. <laughs> yes. Well. Well. And you know. It, I mean, if we had fil- fil- done it the way you intended it, it wouldn't have been nearly as complicated. However, <laughs> we can never settle for easy. <laughs> well, why not? Why not? Why not stretch yourself to your uh, to as far as you can go. To the point of uncomfortable. That's <laughs> Why not? How did, and how did your students feel about that? Like, if you, in terms of um, this process. Well, the actress that played Kim um, is by far our best actress. She might go on actually to an acting career. Is her first choice. Um, so it was a great opportunity for her not only to have the weight of of that character playing both roles on her shoulders, but uh, to stretch herself into film and. And I hope she'll try it again someday, but she didn't like it that much. <laughs> um, I hope she tries again. Um, but, uh, but, but yes, I, I think uh, it was a stretch, and it's nice to take uh, your, your best actor and, and push them to uh, the edge of their, their talent. Absolutely. Totally. Okay, so as we wrap things up here, um, what's one thing that each of you would say uh, when – you know, some people who are listening and they, they've looked at a play and they're like, oh, I couldn't, I couldn't do that. I don't have the the cast for that. I don't have the, oh, we'd have to change things. You know, the whole notion of thinking outside the box, the way you guys have done so well, how would you encourage somebody to do that? I, I just, I think you just, for me, it was, I fell in love with the, the script and I just wasn't going to let go. I wasn't going to let go until I figured out this problem. And I think you have to have that kind of commitment to what you're doing before those ideas come to you, you know? Um, so you, you, you've you got to have, you know, I don't know, the heart and the soul. I, I really, got, I've got to do this. I've got to do that, this with these kids because I can see this character as that character and she's going to do so well. Mm-hmm. So, um, and also, I mean, we read a lot of scripts. We have constantly have 10 to 15 to 20 sitting out there in the wings that we know are pretty good and we just haven't met the kids yet to perform them. Yes. So we, we do have a pile and go, Oh yeah, this play will work with these guys, which is is nice. And, and, and these stick to itiveness definitely is, is something that I've, I've come to trust when uh, we did a play not too, not too long ago called the American car, which I just love. Yeah. And uh, she said, we've got a very small stage. And she said, We'll need three cars on stage. <laughs> and I looked at her like she had grown extra heads. And we had a half a Volkswagen with functioning headlights, about a third of a minivan with the door opening, and a rusty Model T that she painted the other side of on a turntable. Yeah. So, I mean, it was insane. But yeah. she just says, we're going to work it out. Yeah. I'm. I'm not afraid to uh, like make things happen. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so that's 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 my advice. Find someone who says <laughs> we can do this and trust them. <laughs> that's lovely. I love that. Three cars and a turntable. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Thank you so much for talking to me today, D and Tracy. Um, it's yeah. been a it's been a treat. Thank you so much. Awesome. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. 
Thank you, T and Tracy. So before we go, let's do some theater folk news. Since we did all this talking about the gift, uh, I wanted to tell you more about the gift. So this is a, a full length play. Uh, it's mine. I wrote it. I'm very very pleased with it. It's characters to me. These characters in this play are very. They're just very lifelike. I, I just I want to believe that these characters exist really in the world somewhere instead of just on stage. But that's neither here nor there. And the play is inspired by the O. Henry short story, The Gift of the Magi. Right? You know this this. Christmas tale, a uh, husband and wife, they're very poor, they love each other, he's got a watch, she's got beautiful hair, and they both go to a great extremes to buy a gift for the other. Um, she cuts off her hair to get a watch chain, and he sells his watch to give her combs for her hair. And so, of course, they exchange these gifts, and it all it's all about love and selflessness, right? And thinking about other people, and what is the difference between being a selfish person and a selfless person? And that is the core of the gift. Um, what we have in the gift is a, a main character, um, and her name is uh, a couple, she goes through a couple of names, a transfer, name transformation, among other things. Uh, her name is Kimber D, and uh, her family's been turned upside down, and because of that, she has had to um, come to grips with a lot of things. And she makes this transformation between selfish and selfless. And what that means, what that means to her relationships with the people in her class and her family and what her family's going through and her relationships with people who remain selfish uh, in this world that she lives in. A great big cast. Um, it takes place, uh, a lot of the, the action takes place in a drama class where the students are tasked with coming up with a creative interpretation of the gift of the Magi. Um, that's in there. So because of that, there's tons of characters, interesting characters, and with a lovely message to boot. That is the gift based on the gift of the Magi. You can read sample pages at theaterfolk.com or you can click the link in the show notes at theaterfolk.com forward slash episode 167. Finally, where or where can you find this podcast? We post new episodes every second Tuesday at theaterfolk.com and on our Facebook page and Twitter. You can find us on youtube.com slash theaterfolk and on the Stitcher app. You can subscribe to TFP on iTunes. Search for that wonderful word, theaterfolk. And that's where we're going to end. Take care my friends take care